So an important topic at this summer's AAD has been the non-surgical treatment of skin cancers, including adjuvant therapy, topical creams, photodynamic therapy, and radiation for non-melanoma and melanoma skin cancers. So non-surgical treatment options can be a great uh, discussion with your patient to have, especially for those who do not want to undergo surgery or most surgery for their skin cancers. Uh, different non-surgical treatment options include topical chemotherapy, such as a miquimod or 5-fluorouracil. Uh, you can use photodynamic therapy and even radiation for some hard-to-treat cases. So with all the different types of non-surgical treatments, it might be hard to figure out which one is best for your patient. So you really need to have a discussion with your patient about what they expect from the treatment and how long are they willing to basically undergo the treatment for. Some of these non-surgical treatments are much lengthier than the surgery in itself. Uh, we specifically don't use radiation for younger people or people under the age of 55 due to the effects of radiation, the long-term effects, and it can lead to other more uh, squamous cell carcinomas or non-melanoma skin cancers. So for patients with many skin cancers or they have a large field cancerization, topical treatments that treat a wider field or photodynamic therapy can be a, a great solution. It treats a wide field of the area. It can be safe to use. It can really treat their precancers and their, their superficial skin cancer at the same time. So with all these treatment modalities, really patient compliance and close follow-up by their dermatologist is key. Um, it's hard to see an endpoint in some of these topical treatments because it's not as easy as, you know, you do surgery, you finish it, and then you move on. With these treatments, you may not get the same endpoint. So really close follow-up to make sure there's no tumor regrowth or um, no progression of disease is needed. So amiquimod is a great treatment. It has been used for superficial basal cells, um, as well as off-label for nodular basal cells, squamous cell carcinoma, and even lentigo maligna on the face. Uh, with, my, with my amiquimod treatment, I usually like to start the patient slowly and then increment it as we go along. So I usually start about three times per week, um, doing uh, the application in the day and then leaving it on for 12 hours and then basically washing it off at night. And then if they can tolerate that, we can bump it up to five times per week and then eventually, if needed, to seven days per week. Um, we're looking for any erythema or any inflammation of the area to show that it's working. And then we basically follow it from there. It's hard sometimes to titrate the side effects and patient compliance, so you really have to have a close discussion with your patient regarding that. So photodynamic therapy can be a wonderful adjuvant to uh, a person who has a lot of field cancerization or widespread actinic damage. Uh, we like to use ALA with blue light, um, and we can do anything from one treatment uh, and then another one four weeks apart. What I like to do is I like to curette the area, whether it's you know AKs or superficial basal cells. I like to curette the area first, do an acetone prep, and then apply the, the ALA for about three hours under occlusion, and then use blue light to irradiate the area. Lentigo maligna can be one of our most difficult cases to treat, especially when it occurs on the face. Um, so surgery remains a gold standard of treatment. However, sometimes surgery can lead to a large surgical defect or an impairment of cosmesis. So some patients may not opt for that. So things like amiquimod or even radiation therapy has been shown effective for lentigo maligna. Again, close follow-up is needed because afterwards you want to see um, no progression of disease or what we fear most is that invasive disease progresses. So it's really, a, you have to have a good discussion with the patient and let them know the limitations of these treatment options. And that while surgery is the best option, if, it's, if they're not up for it or if it will lead to disfigurement, we can try these other non-surgical modalities first.